Hello and welcome to Warhammer 40k 8th edition battle report number 2. I'm going to use this time to present the armies, present the mission, and to talk some about the strategies of each army involved in the upcoming battle report. Stay tuned and let's look at the armies. Today we will be playing 1850 points of Death Guard versus Ultramarines. Starting with the Death Guard army, they have two detachments in this Battle Forged list, a Spearhead Detachment and a Battalion Detachment. Beginning with the Spearhead Detachment, we have a Lord of Contagion who is going to be the Warlord. He is armed with a Man Reaper and his Warlord trait is Revoltingly Resilient. The three heavy support choices in the Spearhead Detachment is a single Chaos Land Raider armed with a Combi Bolter, a Twin Heavy Bolter, and two Twin Last Cannons. And then there are two Plague Burst Crawlers to fill out the rest of the detachment. They are both armed the same way with one Plague Burst Mortar, one Rot Tail Volley Gun, and two Entropy Cannons. In the Battalion Detachment, there are two Demon Princes of Nurgle with wings. They both have two sets of Malefic Talents. They both know the Psychic Power Smite, and they both know the Psychic Power from the Contagion Discipline, Curse of the Leper. Their strategy will be to use Smite, mostly, and then if one of them has access to a good target for Curse of the Leper, then one of them will use that instead. But for the most part, they will be moving quickly around the board and smiting foes and trying to get into close combat. For troop choices, there are four troop choices in this battalion detachment. The first is a Plague Marine squad with seven models in the unit. It is led by a Plague Champion who is armed with a Plague Sword a Power Fist, and a Plasma Gun. Two models are armed with Plasma Guns and Plague Knives. And then four models are armed with Bolt Guns and Plague Knives. All seven, of course, have Blade Grenades and Crack Grenades. For troop choices two through four, they are each a 10-man Poxwalker squad, all armed with improvised weapons. Rounding out the battalion detachment, there are two elite choices. First is a single plague surgeon, armed with a bail sword, a bolt pistol, blight grenades, crack grenades, and he also has the relic of decay, the separating plate. The second elite choice is a Blight Lord Terminator unit with five models in the squad. They are led by a Blight Lord champion armed with a bubotic axe and a combi bolter. One of the regular Blight Lord Terminators has a flail of corruption. The second regular Blight Lord Terminator has a bubotic axe and a Reaper autocannon. And the final two models in the unit are armed with combi bolters and bubotic axes. The bubotic terminator squad is going to start the game in reserve and teleport strike onto the battlefield at the end of turn one. Exactly where will be determined by how both sides are deployed and where they can be the most effective, of course. The plague surgeon the Plague Marines and the Lord of Contagion will all be embarked at the beginning of the game inside of the Land Raider. And most likely, depending on how the battle goes, of course, they will disembark turn two and be able to rapid fire 
their plasma guns and bolt guns onto the nearest enemy unit. Already mentioned, the Demon Prince's goal is to move around the board quickly, smite things, and try to get into close combat. And the Poxwalkers will spend the majority of their time holding whatever objectives are in their starting deployment zone. Finally, the Plague Burst Crawlers will attempt to strike things from far away with their mortars and use their entropy cannons to take down heavier targets. They will also slowly move up the board in order to attempt to contest objectives. And that is the entirety of the 1850 points Death Guard Army. It is exactly 1850 points. It is 97 power, and because it is Battleforged and it has the two detachments, it has a total of seven command points available to it. Moving over to the Ultramarines side of things, they have three detachments in this Battleforged 1850 point army. A battalion detachment and then two super heavy auxiliary detachments. Starting with the battalion detachment, they have two HQs, one captain in Gravis armor and one Primaris lieutenant. The captain in Gravis armor has a bolt storm gauntlet, a mastercrafted power sword, and he also has the chapter relic the armor Indomitus. He will also be utilizing, at the beginning of the battle, the Stratagem Chapter Master, which makes it so that anyone within six inches of him can re who is an Ultramarine, like he is, can re-roll all failed hit rolls instead of just hit rolls of one. The Primaris Lieutenant is armed with a Bolt Pistol, a Power Sword, Frag and Crack Grenades, he will be using the stratagem at the beginning of the battle, Relic of the Chapter, in order to switch out his power sword for the relic, the Burning Blade. There are four troop choices, three tactical squads, and one intercessor squad. The three tactical squads are all kitted out the same way. There's a last cannon in each squad, and the sergeant in each squad will have a bolt gun and bolt pistol, just like the three regular guys. They also all have frag and crack grenades. And the last cannon tactical marines also have bolt pistols, just like everyone else. So five bolt pistols, four bolt guns, and one last cannon in each squad. The ten intercessors are all kitted out the same way. Everyone has a bolt pistol, bolt rifle, frag and crack grenades. And the sergeant is this guy over here who has the red helmet on his hip. Finally, rounding out the battalion detachment, we have a heavy support choice of 10 Hellblasters. The Hellblaster Sergeant will be the one with the white base. There are 10 bolt pistols, 10 plasma incinerators, frag and crack grenades in the squad. So everyone has the exact same weapons. And that is the battalion detachment. Moving on to the first Super Heavy Auxiliary Detachment, we have Rabout Gilliman, who will be the Warlord in this battle. He has the Hand of Dominion, of course, the Emperor's Sword, and his Warlord trait will be Adept of the Codex. The second Super Heavy Auxiliary Detachment is going to be a Knight Paladin. He has an Ironstorm Missile Pod, 
a Rapid Fire Battle Cannon, a Thunder Strike Gauntlet, and two Heavy Stubbers. And Titanic Feet, of course. The strategy for this army will be to have the three tactical squads sit back and hold objectives while also picking apart heavier targets. Gilmon, the Intercessors, and the Night Titan will stick together while moving up the board so that Gilmon's aura of abilities can affect both the Intercessors and the Night Titan, since Gilmon does have an ability that can affect Imperium models and not just Ultramarines. And then the Captain and the Primaris Lieutenant will move up behind the Hellblasters, opposite the board from Gilmon and his group, in order to have heavy fire support on the other side of the board, and so that they can take advantage of the Captain's Chapter Master ability, and the Lieutenant allows them to re-roll wound rolls of one. And that is the entirety of the Ultramarines army. For the battle report, we will be playing the Maelstrom of War mission Contact Lost, which is where at the beginning of the first turn each side will draw one tactical objective, and in all subsequent turns they will draw the number of objectives up to a maximum of six based off of how many tactical objectives or based off of how many objective markers on the board that they hold. We will be playing a Vanguard Strike Deployment, so the Diagonal Deployment, and this is the board that we will be playing on today. It is a 4 foot by 6 foot board, and there is one objective in each, in each 2 foot by 2 foot section. So objective number 3 will be right there. Objective number six will be right there. Objective number four hidden away down here. Objective number five over on this side. Objective number one. And objective number two. We will now roll off for deployment zones. On a 1, 2, or 3, the middle line will go from this corner over to that far corner. On a 4, 5, or 6, the line in the middle will go from this corner over to that far corner on the right side. And it's a two. So deployment will be from this corner down to that corner for the middle line, which means that one army will be deploying over here, and one army will be deploying over in the top right corner. On a one, two, or three, the Death Guard will deploy in this bottom corner which is closer to them. On a 4, 5, or 6, they will deploy in the far side. And of course the Ultramarines will deploy in the opposite corner. And that's a 4. So the Death Guard will be deploying in the far corner. And that is the end of our pregame show. Please stay tuned for the battle report which will be coming up soon. Thanks for watching.